do this. Hi guys, welcome. Uh, artists and friends of artists here to our third exhibition opening of New Society Art. Um, and uh, before we sort of kind of begin, I wanted to jump into a land acknowledgement. Um, uh, where we are meeting virtually today is the original homeland of the Mashpee Wampanoag, Akuna Wampanoag, Nipmuc, and the Massachusetts Tribal Nations. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and the forced removal from this territory, and we honor and respect the many diverse indigenous people still connected to this land on which we gather. And let us also take a moment to consider the legacy of colonization embedded within the technology structures and ways of thinking we use every day and the technology central to art uh, leave significant carbon footprints that contribute to a changing climate. This disproportionately affects indigenous peoples worldwide. I invite you to join me in acknowledging all of this and our shared responsibility so that we may consider our roles in reconciliation, decolonization, and allyship. So welcome again to uh, New Society and our theme this month, uh, the phenomenon of natural phenomenon. Just a quick brief on our gallery. It's our gallery that seeks to showcase science-inspired artwork, for which provokes new ideas and perspectives. Um, I was really excited as the curator um, and Fenwell Mundi as the chief curator to pick a theme like this, um, you know, because for me, I'm the natural world is what draw what I draw energy from. So to, especially now that we're kind of in this space of COVID and a lot of us are kind of cloistered in our homes, we're seeing sort of the changes outside in terms of climate, in terms of, you know, the birds. And um, I think it, it's, it's really allowing us to kind of take a closer look at where we are in our um, place of being. So um, again, welcome. Um, we really appreciate you guys being here. Our artists today, um, we have a great, fantastic selection of artists. We have photography, we have on-site installation, drawing. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Citron Celine and Luca Lunardi, um, Ivan Juarez, Vicente Ortiz Cortez, Kana Chinska, I hope we got that, <laughs> and Madvi Ven Venkatesh. So welcome. Um, And uh, without further ado, so we can kind of move it on. Oh, I just wanted to mention today um, how we're going to go through the show. Every artist has about five minutes to present their work. Um, and then at the end, we're going to have a Q&A session. So if artists have questions for each other um, or if the audience has questions, um, please like write them in the chat and we're, we'll jump right in and everyone can have really fantastic um, kind of discussion with each other's work. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Citron Spleen and Luca Lunardi. Okay. Mm. We present now? Yes. Okay. Hello, everybody. We are okay. Selene and Luca Lunardi. Share. And um, at the exhibition, uh, we present um, compost uh, number one. Uh, I am Selene and he is Luca. Uh, we have been working together since uh, 2014. And our duo is a collaboration between two different personalities. I am a performer and sculptor. And my research is based on use of simple material, plaster, argilla, resin, twine, and iron. And um, now uh, my work is focused on digital fabrication and 3D printing. I am also a sculptor teacher. teacher. Luca, in which, uh, he is a filmmaker. He is specialized in scientific communication and documentary. His uh, artist research explores some different areas, cinema, video, art, science, and animal studies. 
our artwork and uh, in the, this page uh, you can see uh, other our work um, take a critical view of social, political and cultural issues. Often they arise from a very urgent suggestion of the society problems. This suggestion bec often became an artifact created by me uh, or sometimes a performance. At this point, the object or the performative act became a subject that Luca develops in film language. We scrutinize established terms like nature, culture, and technology, including their definition boundaries. We drove up experimental and future-oriented scenarios to reflect upon the hybrid network between humans and their environment. Our artwork uh, became a hybrid that mixes uh, the pixel framework and the 3D print, uh, the performance and the environment, a contamination that redraws the boundaries between the human and the post-human, the analogical and the digital, the artificial and the natural. Our recent uh, suggestions are the studies of the philosopher of science and pioneer cyber feminist Donna Haraway, who calls for an interspecies symbiosis. Hello, everybody. Um, we live in an age where the boundary between nature and artifice is increasingly blurred. Uh, humans are changing the biodiversity of the natural world and gradually replacing it with digitalized versions, like echoes of, of the past. Uh, in this scenario, uh, we no longer appear to be the measure of all things, but rather an uh, hybrid part of, uh, of always evolving everything. This is, used, is urgent, especially against the backdrop of the ongoing uh, pandemic. It is necessary, uh, to use uh, Don Haraway's words, to stay with the trouble in this infected time and deal with uh, kinship systems among various species. So our video compost number one, the first of this new series called Compost, tries to examine compost as a figuration that articulates life in complex, more than human ecologies, humans and the other critters often bundled in assemblages saturated with modern technologies. We are compost, uh, not post-human. We inhabit the humusities, uh, not the humanities. Uh, in the near future, we will not a post-human world, but a compost-human world, the Cthulhu characterized by a continuous process of composition and decomposition. Um, we inspired uh, uh, the plant neurobiologist Stefano Mancuso is another author who influences our latest work, especially uh, for the notion of a plant as intelligent or um, behaving and the concept of hierarchy different from ours. The plant nation it says that if the plant world were a nation, the rules of governance world be totally different from our own. Uh, plants are different. Uh, they don't have organs or control center. Uh, all the function are spread, ac are spread across the, the entire body of the plant. A plant sees, feel, breath, and the reasons with the entire body. Uh, plants are kind of horizontally diffusive, decentralized organization that are much more in line with modernity. For example, the internet is a decentralized root system. Plants, say Mancuso, are master of starting symbiotic relationship with other organisms, bacteria, mushroom, insect, even us. Uh, technically, uh, this, uh, our artistic project tries to understand this future scenario uh, by, by exploring the borders between science, video art, and digital sculpting uh, in this path uh, that uh, mixes video installation and 3D printing 
sculpture uh, setting the stage for a panorama populated by symbiotic assemblage in factors surviving and migrant collaborative beings, artificial intelligence biofabricated uh, that evolve in a liminal environment between natural and artificial, between mineral and, and organic, in which life is composting. And this is only a preview of our videos. Uh, and we want to thank so all. Uh, this is a um, backstage of our work <laughs> with a 3D print. <laughs> Thanks. What, what is that? Is that the, the 3D printer you said? Yes, uh, the, the things green, oh. the green things, uh, 3D print. And this one, one moment, uh, this, mm -hmm. this uh, is uh, an uh, um, elaboration, elaboration uh, with In 3D. 3D. For the 3D stamp. Oh, For the wonderful. 3D print. And that's what you printed and put in the film. Yes, this is a, a drop, <laughs> 3D, 3D. Wow. Great. What I'm so what I like love about this, and Fenwell, like please like you know be the timekeeper and, and get me if I <laughs> if we go over a little bit. Maybe um, so. Well, maybe you do like a quick comment and then we have to keep moving. Okay. Yes. We okay. Well, I'm looking forward um, to hearing more and chatting more. So, but we'll 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 hop on to the, our next artist. Uh, you guys, uh, do stop sharing. Stop. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you're trying to do, do hang tight because we'd like to have a Q&A &A open and have a conversation with everybody, including you as well. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'd like to introduce our next artist, um, Ivan Juarez. Feel free to jump in and, and share your screen when you're ready. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I will just share my screen. Yep. Okay, and I think it's... I think, I'm, I think it's, I'm still looking yours. I, okay, so now... So I will try it again. And... Okay, I'm sharing the screen and then the PowerPoint presentation and okay. Yes, we can see it. Okay, excellent. Okay, th thank you. Thank you for the invitation and I'm very pleased of being part of the exhibition and I'm very honored of being there. I mean, being here and there also, right? And uh, now uh, I'm from Mexico, but now uh, that at this precise moment I'm living in Poland. So I will, I will introduce my presentation, first I will do a, an artistic uh, introduction, what is my research approach, and then I will speak about the two artistic experiences uh, related to the natural phenomena. Uh, walking on leaves, observe sky and trees, listening the wind on leaves, 
touching bar and trees, listening woodpeckers, observe flora and fauna, perceive seasons. So my artistic research approach is related to the dialogue between three different disciplines, from contextual art practices like environmental art and public art, but also with landscape architecture and architects. So, but always these three disciplines are related to the natural environment. And in the last few years, I've been working on the, in a specific research titled Central Landscapes, and which I try to provide strategies and sensitive approximations for understanding our natural environment through perceptions and experiences. Because nowadays, I think there is a new sensibility in, and we are trying as an artist and a society to try to reimagine new ways of coexistence between humans, animals, plants, and also natural phenomena. And as an artist, we are creating new narratives to you know, provoke our senses, experiences, and trying to create, create new poetries. So with this approach, I have the opportunity of working in different places, uh, mostly working in site-specific uh, interventions. I had the opportunity of working in many landscape uh, places in different regions, but uh, in, for this exhibition, I will present two specific experiences. The first one honors the dynamic landscape of transition between water and land in a Brazilian coastal scenario. And the second one honors the seeds of an uh, ancient uh, farming system from the Mayan civilization in Mexico. So I will present the first one, uh, it's titled Sky Mirrors uh, or Low Tide. So this is a site-specific intervention that uh, was located in, in Brazil, in the western coast of Salvador de Bahia. And so this is an island, uh, the, the island is called Itaparica Island. It, it's right in the middle of the Bay of Old Sands. It's an important site because it's right in front of uh, Salvador de Bahia, which is the, was the first capital of Brazil. But what is interesting about this place is, uh, uh, is uh, the natural daily phenomena offered by the sea through the movement of tides. So every day, the, the landscape changed uh, very drastically. So it's a transition between water and land, a, trans a transition between liquid and solid, it's a sequence of ephemeral events that evoke and constantly change in a scenario. So it goes from the liquid scenario to the dune scenario, and then again to the liquid scenario. It's a very a moving uh, landscape. And so I wanted to, to work with this phenomena and as an ephemeral intervention that dialogues with this uh, natural phenomena. So I created a series of ponds, uh, an excavation ponds, where the people could sit and also observe what is the, the, the movement of this landscape. So I was working during the low tide uh, to create these excavations, but after hours, hours later, when the high tide comes back again, so those ponds are filled again. I mean, they're filled with water again, and the, but the water goes again. So I was trying to, to work in, in different moments. And at the end, uh, the final result is to create a connection between the sea and the sky, create, create to this kind of ephemeral sky mirrors. So it's something that is um, working together with this um, uh, natural phenomena to create some, some kind of poetic uh, kind of expression. And then I will show you the second intervention that honors the seeds. And I was working in, with the germination process. The title of the work is La Milpa, which is an ancient agricultural system from Maya civilization in Mexico that is still remains nowadays. Uh, this uh, agricultural system uh, has three, uh, three different seeds, uh, first corn, bean, and squash. So they are working together as, a, as a, they call it like the three sisters because they grow together and they coexist together as, a, as an agricultural system. So this is the model to explain uh, using the seeds and also the uh, corn leaves to explain how, what, how is the, re the relationship between the, those three seeds. And what is important in our culture, in, especially in Mexico, the, the importance of these three, um, these three elements, natural elements, in, the, in our culture and in our, how, we food, how we eat, how we behave. So it's very important. 
So I also try to get um, a vision from the, the Cosmovision uh, itself, uh, trying to, to get uh, to, to tie those, the links between seeds and the human beings. So trying to, the, those, those seeds are part of our, our body. And also was, uh, I was working during the process of this bio biological process with the seed germination to create a series of micro landscapes but those micro landscapes that uh, became uh, like a, a bioconnection between the seeds and body. So how we can be related to this agricultural system as part of our, uh, our existence. So the seeds terminate from the body as a symbolic piece that evokes new links that relate human beings to natural processes. So that's uh, the pieces that I've done and I documented and I photographed them. I, but the, the, the good, the, um, I think the special thing about this project, it was not only the project itself, because it, has a, it was an initiative from the Seeds Culture Initiative. Uh, it's an, a cultural organization that brought together five, not seven artists, sorry, uh, to the Arctic uh, circle, circle, to the Global Seed Vault, to bring all these artworks that we have done in our countries, to bring it and together and, and deposit it together with the Global Seed Vault, which is the most biodiversity uh, room in the world. So we brought those uh, art pieces and we exhibit there in the North Pole. But the most important thing is to, to have a deposit there next to the, to the Global Seed Vault. Uh, we, we couldn't enter to the global seed vault, but next to it, there is the experimental, the, the first global seed. It, it's the, nowadays, it's a, mine, it's a former mining that they have the, the, all the experiments with the seeds. So it's a kind of um, a research area. So we um, put all the pieces together in a box. In a, in a, it's in the box that the, the seeds are, it's the same box for seeds. So we put the artworks there and we enter into the mine and in the, nowadays it's the archive. And we deposit these uh, seeds or these artworks uh, as a, in a ceremonial moment. So we deposit those seeds and nowadays they remain there. It's a connection between the art and they are still honoring the fertile bonds between biological and cultural biodiversity. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Really, uh, that was <laughs> fascinating. I didn't realize that the scope of uh, hey, hey. <laughs> that you were doing that is amazing. Um, we'll have more questions clearly um, at the end, but uh, we just want to move on to our our next artist. Um, Vicente Ortiz Cortez uh, with Paz Eterna, Eternal Peace, beautiful drawing. So uh, when you're ready, feel free to share your screen or did you, or did you um, want us to just show the piece? I can try to show my screen. One moment. Oh. So let's see. Well, well I, do, I do that now that you have the drawing, I can, um, Start. Uh, I'm originally from Mexico and living in Philadelphia in the U.S. Uh, this drawing here, it's a, it's a color pencil drawing on paper about 12 by 9 inches. It's from a series titled 2084. Um, the series is a bit about my state of mind on how I sort of perceive um, the world and the way that I see things going forward uh, with climate change and everything else going on. Um, it's a self-portrait here that um, is based on a painting that I had seen by uh, Jean Hippolyte Flandrin a few years ago. And the cactus sort of represents nature trying to um, reclaim back what humanity has left behind in this year 2084. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen.
Can you try to share it? We didn't we can't. Share as well. Okay. Well, in the meantime, I was really fascinated by the way you sort of brought together plants and your physical body and, and using the self-portrait. Um, uh, I don't know. It's really powerful. Well, I don't seem to be able to do it. Um, well, let me just um, say that uh, the work started with uh, this painting here in the background. Mm -hmm. It's from from uh, 20, 2014. Uh, in the painting here, uh, you can see sort of an orb that sort of now looks like the uh, coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about how the work has evolved over time and the similarities and how sometimes artists create work that reflect the state of the world, but uh, we don't have the words um, to put this into, to describe this state of mind. Um, but I'm really hopeful for um, the future in that nature finds a way of uh, balancing things out. Did you paint that before uh, coronavirus or during this whole crisis, you said? Uh, this uh, is from, the painting in the back was from 2014. This is from, the drawing is from 2019. So this is kind of before everything started yeah. happening. It's, it's funny. Yeah, how, that's right. Yeah. It's funny how the, the themes of, of our relationship with nature and actually our, like, our collision with nature are really kind of coming to a forefront now with the coronavirus. Yes, uh, in this work uh, too, if you see in the distance on the top uh, right corner, there's uh, an eagle carrying a snake uh, flying towards the cactus, um, symbolic of the Aztec prophecy. Um, the Aztecs were trying to find a home. It was prophesied that they would find it wherever they found an eagle um, devouring a snake on a cactus. And this sort of about me trying to find that new home, that place uh, um, where we can find peace and coexist. Uh, that's pretty much it. When you drew that, did you intentionally draw the eagle very far? Because I'm very familiar with the image of the eagle and the snake and on the cactus being sort of the founding of like Mexico, right? The Aztec. Um, is it flying away or towards you? It's uh, flying towards me. It's towards you. So kind of yes, this yeah. coming together. Fantastic. Right, yes. Um, trying to find that new uh, safe place again. Wonderful. Great. Well, well, thank you so much. Really appreciate you kind of talking a little bit. Um, we're going to talk some more. Um, obviously, at the end, I have some more questions, but uh, we will um, move on um, to our next artist. Um, and again, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll go uh, through them and uh, try to get everybody's questions answered. Thanks again, Vicente. Thank you. Okay, and our next artist is Kana Chinska uh, with Ocean Matter. Feel free to share your screen when you're all ready. Uh, yes, I'm ready. Uh, hey. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Kana Chinska, and share in my Okay, share the screen, yes, too. <laughs> I'm sorry. And in my artistic practice, uh, I uh, use new technologies uh, for uh, uh, create multi-sensorical um, experiences uh, that, um, can I, uh, that uh, can help direct the recipient's attention to topics that uh, are often marginalized. Uh, before I created uh, Ocean Matter animation, this work, um, my attention was drawn to an essay by one of the leading representatives. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Uh, the leading representative uh, um, of uh, postmodernism uh, philosopher Wolfgang Welsh. Uh, when I read 
the essay uh, reflecting Pacific, I um, was impressed by uh, how the author, by conveying uh, the concepts of uh, reflecting ocean, tries to help us leave uh, the socially accepted image of human condition behind. At least uh, the one suggested by Western and especially modern philosophy, men as originally autonomous and opposed to the world uh, for uh, the sake of shaping a strong sense uh, of our deep bond uh, with the world. Uh, for Welsh, uh, the ocean is a kind of a cosmic animal. Perhaps nothing on the earth uh, can give us a sense of boundlessness or even infinity so directly, uh, continuously and convincingly. Being impressed with this essay, uh, I began uh, to sketch and define the feelings I had within me. Uh, and I met uh, the musician and uh, we did a little jam session um, and, and then uh, I left uh, the create uh, uh, rest of final uh, song tract to Łukasz Trzciński aka MDFB uh, 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 this is his uh, uh, nickname. Uh, I invite you to watch this uh, all of <laughs> this video uh, with sound on because this is integral part uh, of the video of this artwork. Um, and I started next and I started to build a solid uh, using a 3D graphics program. Uh, I was uh, inspired uh, by shape of seashells uh, in which the Fibonacci patterns uh, is contained. Uh, then uh, I, uh, I tried to look in I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, and um, then uh, I having already textured uh, virtually uh, sculpture uh, and sound and I started to contemplate my piece uh, with uh, using um, VR goggles uh, in graphic uh, engine um, such as uh, ac such action allows for a fresh sight and staying focused, staying focused on the emotion that uh, I want to convey. Uh, I often create an installation in the medium uh, of virtual reality. Uh, this work, uh, I think, could be uh, continued uh, in 360 video. Uh, the last stage of my work uh, is uh, this work uh, is setting a virtual camera and editing final video. Uh, I decided to put a code uh, at the beginning uh, of the video so that the viewer could find my way uh, of getting uh, to know uh, the matter of the ocean. <laughs> uh, the, in my work, I wanted, I wanted to keep uh, the physical substance of uh, the ocean, which is formative and very complex for me. Um, uh, but uh, thanks to the readings of undulating movement, uh, is infinitely uh, beautiful. Uh, this uh, beauty uh, was not designed for uh, to please uh, human eye. It should not to be used uh, as a field for ex expansion and exploitation. Uh, and I believe uh, that uh, contemplation of uh, nature allow us to feel deep connection uh, with the world uh, by which uh, it may finally be possible to redefine and uh, the modern uh, values of our culture. So this is it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I I'm a surfer, so I'm obsessed with the ocean. And what I found so fascinating about that piece was that you were able to 
capture the seeming randomness of the waves, but also like the mathematical regularity of the current and, and everything. And so there was, it was interesting because um, you did use 3D graphics, which can come across as cold sometimes, but, but it wasn't cold to me. There was a lot of movement in it. So it was, it, it was great. Um, for everybody, just in case um, I wasn't clear at the beginning, all of this work, um, you know, is going to be posted at newsocietyart.org. Please go watch the video unfold, listen to the music. Um, it's, it's really great. So, um, again, on to our final artist. Uh, this is fantastic. This is a dance piece. Um, I'm sorry, uh, we have um, Madhvi representing uh, Prakriti dance. So feel free to share, Manuel, when you get a chance. Um. Yeah, so um, Madhvi, did you want me to share it? Or, or I, I, I can go ahead and share it. Um, oh, okay. I think you need to stop sharing before I can share. Here we go. Um, Hi everyone, my name is Madhvi Venkatesh and I'm here representing the dance company Prakriti Dance and talking about our uh, project through fish eyes. And so this is, this was premiered as a live performance at the uh, John F. Kennedy Center in DC in um, May of 2019, so last year. And, you know, with this piece, we really were interested in, you know, presenting the perspective of the ocean and reflecting on our relationship as uh, human beings with nature and specifically with marine life. So before I get into specifics about, too many specifics about the piece, I wanted to tell you uh, about our company. So this is our, the name of our company is Prakriti Dance and our artistic director, Kashi Isola, unfortunately couldn't join today, but he's the choreographer of um, this piece through fish eyes. And uh, Prakriti Dance is a company that focuses on the Indian classical dance style called Bharatanatyam. So this originates from the south of India. And one of our goals is to uh, bring relevance and context to this art form. So we don't want people to see it as something that's frozen in time, even though it does have a very long history. We wanna um, talk about, use it as a language to, uh, convey messages that we feel are relevant to us and relevant to the world today. Um, and we want, in doing so, we want to transcend cultural boundaries, even though it is a um, art form of the Indian subcontinent, we think it really can uh, relate to everyone and speak to everyone. We're hoping to find that, um, you know, universal connection through the art form. And, uh, in our work, we, we engage many artists of the Indian diaspora, not just uh, performers and dancers, but a lot of musicians, um, visual artists, and uh, scholars of some of the different Indian texts as well. So we really want our work to be um, holistic, involving uh, all different types of artists. And as I mentioned, our um, with through fish eyes, we were really intending to uh, present to develop and present this thematic production to raise empathy and awareness about marine ecosystems, hoping to you know give people more of an emotional connection to this topic. And uh, here I have a couple of uh, images from our production, where you know we have this like we show different interactions with between um, here a crab and an octopus. <laughs> um, and then we also kind of show some of the human impacts. What, do, what does plastic do in the environment and how does that affect marine life? What about overfishing? What is the impact on um, marine life? So we wanted to show some of those things to get people to feel uh, more, feel like it's less abstract and uh, 
to feel more of an emotional impact of what does it look like for those animals um, who are experiencing this. So before I jump into showing a video, I really quickly wanted to um, thank the different institutions that supported this work. We were fortunate to be able to get funding from several different sources. And I also wanted to emphasize that this was a huge team effort. As you can see, there are many names here. Um, so as, as I said, in addition to the uh, dancers and performers on stage, there were a ton of people behind the scenes who put together, this is a completely original score, the lighting design, uh, his original costumes were made just for this piece. So um, let me actually switch to a different window if I can. work. Sorry. There we go. So I'm just showing you some excerpts of from the live that started kind of in a very um, mutually beneficial way that kind of then uh, sort of um, broke down to the point where it was becoming uh, one party uh, taking advantage of the other party. So you may have noticed in the video we started in a place um, where you know things felt much more in harmony between humans and nature and then we've kind of we kind of progressed to a point where you know it's kind of this plastic world that is um much less in harmony and where in some cases is uh promoting harm so that's all i have i'm happy to answer any questions that was beautiful. That was I, I was I, the first time I saw it. I actually like teared up a bit. It was like very emotional. I think maybe it was a combination of the music and and the movements. And um, my question for you, um, I really think you were successful in bringing sort of these contemporary issues to dance. And and um, it's great that you were able to articulate that that was your intent because that's what I was feeling 
um, when I was watching it. Do, can you tell me if any of the movements that were used or the forms that were used, were they already sort of um, meant to evoke a certain animal or a certain feeling? Like how did that work? Because you're applying this sort of ancient dance form to a new um, kind of environmental idea. Yeah, so I mean, the so our dance form Bharatanatyam is very expressive naturally, and it has a very um, strong storytelling elements that we were able to leverage as a part of this. But at the same time, we also had to innovate within the form because we have gestures for, you know, like fish and crocodile and turtle, but we don't have things for like, you know, crab and coral that we were showing and or kelp and, you know. Um, no, no ancient jelly, sea cucumber. <laughs> I mean, but like, so I think it's where we used the, um, the, the same style of movements and, you know, we adapted the, so the existing hand positions, like this is an existing, uh, you know, hand position in the dance style, but we decided to use this for the um, for the coral, and we you know also embodied it through our whole bodies. So, so that's the thing is it it's not like we did we use the existing vocabulary just in sort of different combinations and permutations to uh, create a lot of this movement. That's actually a great way to put it, vocabulary. So the, in physical poetry that you've created. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for, for jumping in and, and, and sharing more background about that. Um, at this point, you know, uh, we have a couple of minutes, so I'd really love to open it up to anybody, the artists. Um, you know, feel free to just unmute yourself or write a question in the chat if you want to sort of talk more about everybody's work, um, give a shout out, say it was cool. <laughs> I, I could just pose a question for um, a couple of the artists. So for particularly Kana and Ivan, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the, if there's a contrast between what you had hoped the audience or the viewer, you know, to, to, to respond to in terms of their emotions and compared to what you had hoped that they would actually see, right? So, it, and this is, I guess, for any artist, right? It, when, you're, when you're creating something, you hope that the viewer maybe might respond in a certain way, but they always respond in diverse ways, right? I'm curious if you've seen a contrast, has it matched, has it not matched? Um, any insights would be cool. You, you wanna go, Kana, or should I answer first? <laughs> I, yeah, no, I, I think it's a good question. I think it's the most important question because I, I, when we work in, a, in, specific, in a specific landscapes, mm -hmm. of course we have an idea and we have an, uh, or it's very important to be sensitive in, on, on, on specific, in that specific landscape. And I, I always do a process before by myself or with people with, with this in, in, in that specific area but the responses are always different. So that's what I, I think is very important of, of that, that the, the response from people is not the same always. And maybe I have some expectations of something, but it, what, what is important, well, what is interesting is about the, the nature's gives you the own response. So nature is, it's a dialogue with, the na with nature and, and it's an open di dialogue with nature. So in, in that case, the, Sometimes the work itself is a link or, or just a device to have this connection, but the, the answer, the people, the response of the people is completely different as, as the expectation that we have, have previously. Yeah, in my, in my precise case. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think the new media um, language uh, is still um, in progress in the design process so i think uh, when i have contact with my uh, aud audience uh, 
with uh, every uh, viewers uh, which I talked. Um, I can find the way where when we uh, have a, um, this special emotional contact and I think the multisensorical um, experience uh, is uh, out of uh, out of uh, normal thinking is uh, more more emotional contact. Okay. <laughs> no, thank you. I just find that fascinating. This bridge that the work is creating. I think that's very fascinating. How a person crosses that bridge and where they cross it, that you leave it up to them. And I think that's really cool. And what was the name of that essay and uh, the author again? Because I'm, I certainly want to read it and I bet others want to. Oh. Reflecting Pacific, Wolfgang Welsh. Could you drop that in, he, the, in the chat so that we could yes, all yes. kind of, it's oh, a, wonderful. Of, of, the beginning of, the video. of course, uh, this is on the beginning of my video, the quote ah, uh, yes. is linked. Uh, but I, I, I can uh, make it in, uh, text it in the chat. Oh, wonderful. He's uh, German. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is the essay in German? Is it? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, you can uh, read it uh, uh, in English. Great. Ivan, I have a um, question for you. You traveled everywhere for uh, your pieces. Uh, can you tell me a bit of how you find these locations? Because they're so all over, or who do you connect with um, to, like, is it somewhere that you've gone and you notice something, or do you plan ahead to uh, be at a specific place? Yeah. Actually, well, I, I try to work with the local communities, mostly. I mean, I mean, local communities, but also with the cultural organization from those local communities. So, so I try to go to those places and be like a kind of a long-term uh, time. I mean, long-term could, could I tell you like one to two or three months or maybe more if I can. And uh, it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that is, was, I, I, it's, it's has been adding. It's not, uh, you know, it's like uh, now, now that I present this collage of the, these several projects, but it was not my first, um, it was not my first aim, but now it became like a, a like a huge body of work working on, on different and different scenarios. But mostly I try to, to work with local communities and, and local associations because they're more related to the, to the, to the, to the, to the place. So uh, it's interesting that when I arrived there, and um, sometimes I had a kind of fresh look, can I say, that uh, maybe those so specific places for them are like normal or they're just, uh, they don't, I mean, they don't give the importance that they have as a landscape. So what I try to do is just to, to arrive there and, and to give up their vision that they already have with those, some specific uh, intervention. And for them, it's very interesting because they they perceive the with just with this small piece, they perceive their own landscape in a different way. I mean, there's something that they already had from before, or there's a normal day in, in the daily life. But uh, yeah, there, I and I arrived through different um, from different processes. Sometimes uh, there are open calls, sometimes there are invitations. Uh, so there's a a, var a variety of ways of, of getting to those uh, to those places. Yeah. Sometimes artistic residencies, for example. Yeah. I have a quick question for, um, if I may, Jenny May. Um, Go ahead. Question for Citroen and Lunardi. Could you describe a little bit of how you guys work together? How is that like collaborating? Um, I hope they're still online. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, um, we depart uh, with um, um, my idea, but uh, Luca changed something. Uh, we discuss uh, much uh, about uh, our idea, um, and uh, later um, uh, we draw. Uh, I draw uh, 
um, a storyboard uh, or uh, sometimes um, uh, it's my suggestions uh, and uh, my my monster because I, I, I love the monster with the 3D print. I, I, I draw with a computer in 3D and uh, later I print this uh, and um, from, from these uh, things uh, uh, later we discuss uh, um, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> a lot of discussion between, uh, <laughs> between us. Uh, it's uh, uh, a continuous uh, uh, border and chaos. A continuous working in progress. <laughs> I am chaos and he is order. <laughs> That's very good. Thank you. That, yeah, I can imagine sometimes it, it makes the process, I don't know, does it accelerate the process or does it make it take longer to produce something? Uh, longer, longer. Um, um, because uh, uh, when uh, we have uh, uh, an idea, uh, we have uh, to... The message of your work was so fantastic and integrative. And, and, and to be able to combine community and environment and math and science together in these pieces, which I feel they all successfully did and, and created an emotion was, um, I think, a really fantastic and inspiring artistic um, you know, success. So um, if anybody, I would have invited everybody to kind of stick around. I don't know, Fenwell, do you think we should or? I, I, I unfortunately don't think so. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. We'll share, we'll, we'll share out everybody's contact information and maybe set up another meeting where we can kind of get together and debrief. I had a bunch of questions that I was gonna ask, but um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of close up shop. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us, for coming in at your different time zones, sharing your work, articulating your process and your inspiration, um, you know, we're, we're gonna be doing this again on August 15th with the second batch of artists. Um, I kinda will be there again with an, another piece. And yeah, well, thank you. Thank you so much, we really, really appreciate it. Yes, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Right. Thank Have you a great all. day, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.